That's good. And we are ready to rock. Hello, everyone. Hey, Luke, did you get your you got your drink for the real estate happy hour? Oh yeah, right here. Ryan, no face. Ooh, I, I, I did not get one. I don't know. If we, <laughs> I don't know if we warned we, him. We didn't, we didn't give him the. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't tell him about that part. I got a sour. What do you got? I'm rocking, I'm rocking no trace IPA from Unmapped. I'm also unmapped. Local. That's my favorite brewery. I mean, like we're going, we're going local. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, we've got uh, today with us, obviously me and Luke, but we have Brian Parent of we call it Parent Builders Inc. Parent Builders. What do we call it, Brian? Yes, Parent Builders Inc. Perfect. Parent Builders Inc. Uh, been in business for quite a long time, right? Since 1987. There you go. And Brian's built some fantastic houses for clients of mine. We're looking forward to chatting with him about kind of how COVID-19 has um, changed things in the construction world. But first, we will start off with our fun fact of the week. Fun fact. My favorite one, and I'll explain after the why. Okay. In 1934, the Federal Housing Administration was created to protect lenders and reduce lending risk. And this was with the uh, new Roosevelt's Great New Deal. Yeah, there you go. You got it. It was needed because lenders had grown super cautious during the Great Depression because of how lender, how mortgages were structured and how many people defaulted. Um, the question is, which of the following systems came with the creation creation of the FHA? It's I'm, going with, I'm going with B, lower B. down payment requirements. Brian? I, you know what? what? Need, I'll read them, I'll read them. A, home quality standards. B, lower down payment requirements. C, 15 to 30 year loans. D, amortization periods. And E, all of the above. I'm going to go with all of the above. Ooh, e, it is E. Oh, e, all of the above is correct. Oh, and I thought this was, I didn't know, I kind of ran across this. And I didn't know the history of the FHA and kind of what it was. But I think this is a really cool fact because I fact because I feel like FHA loans in today's market have kind of this bad connotation on them. But the FHA, like the Federal Housing Administration, like created the, you know, new market loans, whether it's conventional even, because before this, loans were all like five years, you needed a 50% down payment, and they were all interest only payments until a balloon payment after the end of the five years. So tons of people defaulted. Um, and I just think it's pretty cool that like the FHA, which is now seen as maybe not as good of a loan, literally produced what we see as it's the standard for what loans are now. Well, and the, the reason it, it's kind of seen how it is now is because you have all these conventional products that also have low down payment options. Same thing, yeah. Which is the appetite for doing credit, right? I mean, exactly. that weeds, but that's what's gotten us to the point where we are today, where we have way, I mean, I don't know if it's way too much, but we have a lot of credit running around in our world. Mm -hmm. um, people loaning to other people so they can loan to other people so they can loan to other people sort of thing. Um, and obviously that wasn't around back then. So mm -hmm. um, kind of interesting. Interesting yeah. history lesson. It's a good one, Luke. I like it. What do we got here? Update. So this is the standard update on the market here. That I think the coolest thing on this is that showings passed um, the percent above first week of January uh, than they were before stayed home started. So it seems like we're about back to where that market was, which, as people remember, uh, it was crazy. And pending sales were up a lot, um, and listings were kind of coming, which they're kind of coming here again, but showing seem to still be um, crushing the listings and inventory is still pretty low. Yeah, but pretty sweet that the sellers and the buyers have now officially come back to the levels they were at. Pretty nice. Um, you know, pre-March 9th, kind of when everything started happening. So exciting on our end, at the very least. Um, yeah. Still, our like we talked about our team meeting, it's multiple offers central on pretty much anything that's a good price still. So. I had, I lost in a nine offer situation this last weekend. So I got one I'm waiting to hear back on right now. So yeah, it's, it's been, it's been crazy. Um, mm -hmm. Which leads us into our next piece. We've talked so much about real estate and how it's affected, you know, as agents are into things, but um, Brian will get more into it, but construction was also deemed essential uh, during this whole thing and has been allowed to carry on. Um, but we wanted to ask Brian just a few questions about, you know, what, what kind of changes he's seeing um, and, and kind of what's going on. And you can do a little background too, Ryan, if that's helpful. Yeah, right? give us a little bit of introduction too to start. Yeah, what, do you, what are you seeing, um, here, let's do it this way, there we go. What are you seeing changing due to the pandemic um, in, in your world, in the construction industry? 
I would say as far as changing, it's kind of a lot, I guess. You know, just the permit process, for instance, I'll, I'll use the city of Blaine as an example. We bring in our blueprints and we bring in our surveys and all that kind of stuff and we put them in an envelope. They actually let them sit out in their vestibule for 24 hours so that any germs on there can die before they touch them. Um, and then from there, they go in and they do their thing. And when we, I went to pick up a CO today, I had to drop a check off, take a picture of it, put it in an envelope, and then they emailed me a CO. So we don't go in the office at all anymore. It's just kind of, it, you know, it's kind of interesting, I guess. But as far as that kind of stuff for inspections, even, they will do some virtual inspections or, you know, face yeah. them basically to go look at a, water heater install or just something like that. They can do it without going in somebody's house right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of your other questions later on is, you know, what could change? You know, some of those things could change forever where the inspector can do, you know, maybe twice as many inspections per hour that they used to do because they don't have to drive out there and get go to someone's house. And yeah, yeah so on, on that topic, Brian, does it, I mean, you've been entrenched kind of in the area that, you, that you're in now for a long time up in the north suburbs. I mean, does it, that's got to be helpful right now, given that you probably already know all of the inspectors yourself. Right. And that does help. And they have a certain trust level with everybody. Right. If you do a nice job and you do things the way they're supposed to be done, it's easy for them to do the inspection. You know, because they, they can see that whatever you're showing them is on lines with what you, how you typically do things. Totally. And is, is, um, are you seeing, uh, like any changes? I know it's a lot, but like any changes in like the procedural stuff, like, are you implementing anything or any of your subs implementing anything that's specific to like, you don't have HVAC there at the same time as electrical or whatever, you know, in, in resident residential construction, that kind of happens mm -hmm. kind of naturally because you can't have people in on top of one another for the most part. And, you know, when it first came out, they said that you didn't want more groups of bigger than 10. Well, in residential construction, there really isn't any crews that are ever that big. You know, framing crews might be your biggest crew of maybe four to five people. So we're always under that 10 limit, even if there would happen to be a heating guy and a plumber there at the same time, it's still only two, um, two to three people. And the houses are always big enough for, you know, you not, you don't ever have to be within six feet without another. Hmm. Interesting. And are you seeing, so I, I just want to just to back up on the inspections, because I know it sounds like you think that maybe some of those inspections will go virtual maybe into the future, because I'm assuming you're seeing that some of those processes maybe are a little bit easier, like builds could maybe go a little bit quicker and you can get through things a little bit faster if they can virtually do some of it. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure necessarily on the new construction side, if much of that will be inspected virtually. Sure. But someone, the inspector's time in general, I think, can get more efficient. efficient. Yeah. Just because, you know, if someone, you know, an existing house has to replace a furnace or a water heater, something that's fairly simple, where they can go in and look at with one room, look at, you know, what was going on, and they can check the certain things that they're looking for and then check it off and, you know, five minutes later go on to the next one. Where new construction, I think for the most part, they're going to come out and hopefully inspect what we are doing still. Yeah, which makes sense. We had, because we had an air conditioner put in last June, like this time. And I feel like we spent more time talking about not the air conditioner than the actual inspection he did when right. the guy went through. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, this looks good. And then we were just talking about it. You get sidetracked with fishing stories or whatever yeah. <laughs> happened on the weekend. And then you know, they burn up their hour or whatever it is where sure. had they done it the other way, they might have done four different inspections in the same amount of time. Interesting. That's mm -hmm. super interesting. And and have you seen, I mean, um, it's is it hard to say, I guess, like how, how has activity changed? Like inquiries on building new homes from people, um, just general thoughts of people in terms of construction. Have you seen any changes there? I think so. It, and it's it's going to be an odd answer because it seems like there's more people out looking now than there ever has been. I just, it doesn't make any sense to me, but even decks and little projects, people are at home probably staring oh. at their stuff and realizing, oh my gosh, I need to fix this and this and this and this. And 
I think it's gotten people out of the woodwork where, you know, you go to Menards or just any of these box stores and they're just packed. Their parking lots are full. Mm -hmm. Everyone's kind of doing the little stuff that they've overlooked forever. Yeah, exactly. That's what like this, when we were talking about this this weekend when we did the spring cleanup for all the Honey Brothers properties. Mm -hmm. where we had to go to Home Depot in the morning. And I was like, I hope it's not a 50 person line standing out because we have to stand there for 10 minutes just to get into the store. Yeah, it's weird. they've been packed every time I've went too. Yeah. It's crazy. It is totally wild. And I mean, you I mean, I know in terms of like new housing starts like that stuff was just blitzing across the country before this all happened. And I think it saw a little bit of a blip in March, but wasn't April was April back up again or am I not saying that right? Maybe I didn't see the I didn't see the permit numbers. Um, it. It surprised me if they were really consistent. It seems to me that all the people I'm working with have all been really busy and stayed busy. I mean, interest rates are so good mm -hmm. that people are still interested. Um, I did talk to a trust guy this week and he said that he can see down the pipeline where he's gonna have some slowness coming. Hmm. And in construction, I think it probably, we're gonna lag the slow time of lag for us because what we've been doing the last month or two is stuff that we may be sold in January prior or, you know, even before that, prior to us getting shut down or the state getting shut down, I should say. Totally, totally, totally. That's and that's kind of how we see real estate too. It's like we're going to be, you know, a couple of months behind when anything kind of happens because it takes time to close. And obviously, in construction, it takes even longer probably for the lead up time into starting a new home. Um, so you started to talk about a little bit about changes to the industry um, that you think are going to be permanent. You talked about, you know, maybe some of that remodeling permit type stuff. Um, talk a little more about that. Maybe even like if you see people, uh, cause it's a prime time probably for consumers to decide that they're just going to start designing their homes differently, you know, maybe having more home offices or having, um, I don't know, Minnesota more indoor play space is probably really helpful right now for people. Um, just like, are, are you seeing that yet? Or what, what do you, I mean, you've been doing this for 30 some years. So you've probably seen all these changes to what people, how they design their homes. What do you, what do you think is going to come of this? You know, it's interesting. I was talking to Mark Shear from Shear Brothers the other day, and he was talking about how he thinks this is going to change the design of houses. Mm -hmm. You can imagine a couple parents being home with elementary kids trying to teach homeschool and do their work, get their, get their officing out of their house, how stressful and how terrible that must be unless your house is designed for it and so you know the two of us were talking thinking that in the future people will design um, more home office space and more separate from the main living areas of the house so that you can find someplace quiet um, i just signed a purchase agreement with a guy um, up here in blaine and as we're designing his house the last 48 hours he actually added a second home office to the second floor right at the end because he I think realized that at some point he might need it again. Wow. That's that's fascinating. That's that's kind of what I was thinking. I'm like looking for stories like that of people because I just am like, I mean goodness, if we were redoing our remodel in our house, I would have probably put another type of pocket office space on the main level, kind of tucked in the mudroom or something so that um, I could be away from things. Right. So you can see AJ's little tiny office in the corner of the basement. And yep. Luke maybe would need to add a kennel to his office. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. We uh I don't have one here. Caitlin's in our office. Next place I'll have some more space. A, a, a built in. I'm in the porch right now, but there's not a ton of space here. Sweet. Well, this is all really awesome information. Brian, I guess uh what el like what else do you think would be helpful for people in terms of construction? Like if someone right now um, cause like you said, people are still doing it. Um, if someone right now were like, is it a good time for me to build a house? Um, should I wait to build my house? Should I not do the house? Um, whatever. Uh, oh, we got, here we go. Sorry to interrupt, but we've got our perfect combo. Our, our favorite clients here, Drew, oh. who actually built with Brian. I was going to say <laughs> that sounds about right. And it's an amazing house. Um, but yeah, what would you say to someone who asked that question of you right now? Like, should I, should I be doing this? Should I be thinking about this? Or what should I be thinking about if I'm preparing to build a house in this strange time? You know, I don't think that the, the virus really is affecting the building of the houses so much. I mean, all the, like we were talking about before, the subcontractors are staying separate. 
Um, there isn't those kinds of issues. I guess one of the things that I neglected to say earlier is that has changed though, is that some of my customers are, let's say you're going to the lumber yard and you're gonna pick out your spindles and your hardware and some of the wood species and doors and stuff like that. They're actually doing it on FaceTime and mm -hmm. they're doing it kind of like that. Instead of the customer actually going into the lumber yard, they were able to stay at home and, and do it that way. And I think that that probably works fairly good but and when this gets over i'm sure that people are going to want to run in and confirm and feel and touch and make darn sure that what they chose this way would be what they really want to see yeah for sure I agree but as far as to answer your question i don't think there's really any drawbacks other than that right now i think we're we're continuing to move forward and like we said interest rates are good and um, right I've, I've got a client building um out on the west side here and they they did a some FaceTime virtual type stuff for some of their selections. Do you know of any platforms that like, cause I just ordered, I talked about a couple weeks ago, I ordered an Oculus, which is one of those VR headsets. Mm -hmm. um, my order got screwed up. So it's coming soon, I think now, but basically like everyone's doing Matterport tours now. So I had the idea of like, I could buy a bunch of these Oculus things, drop them off at all my buyers houses um, and actually tour homes with them virtually before actually going oh. to in-person showings. Right. So I guess my, Leading up to that, my question for you would be like, in the construction world, do they, beyond just doing like a video um, type setup, like a video meeting, do, do they have anything like that where you can actually like tour a home that way um, before building it? Like, you know, the, the architect can do the renderings and then you could actually look through it with like a VR type headset. And, and I, haven't, I haven't been involved in any of that, those types of things yet. Um, I just did learn my assistant and I were just talking before this meeting that sounds like the parade of homes is, you know, we got cut short with the parade of homes. It's usually five six weeks long. It only lasted two weeks and that ended, which, you know, for a lot of builders, that spring preview is a huge percentage of all their sales for the year. Mm -hmm. Um, they are doing something like that, that are going to start up here and it's going to run for like a month where you're going to walk through the houses virtually like that, like you're talking about. Um, I'm not sure how they're doing and how it's going to set up, but it's coming. Interesting. That'll be, that'll be fun to follow. I think. Cool idea. Yeah. I just, I mean, I just figure like if anything, you know, we've been looking for efficiencies, right? Like the stuff you talked about with the permits, like I feel like there's gotta be more efficiencies that are going to come out of this, but construction is so interesting because it's such, you know, there's no real replacement yeah. for, you know, a hammer and nail, right? Like there's gotta yeah. be a guy there putting the thing together um, pulling all the wires through all the boxes and all that. So um, it's just interesting to hear some of your take on what's going to happen in that world because it's going to change. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do think like you're saying, it's like there's not many drawbacks and there's not that, you know, there might be some change in the interim, but a lot of it, you know, might just go back to business as usual because it's so, you know, it's so difficult to substitute a lot of those items. Not right. to mention, just like just like we talk about on the existing houses, people are going to want to feel out the space. I would think, right? You could, I think, with a lot of that stuff, if if you're the first mover in in that kind of an opportunity where you are doing the virtual stuff, you might see a you might see a little bit of an advantage on getting brand awareness. I would think, but yeah. I, I imagine most people are still going to want to feel what that space is going to be like. Remember our client Carolyn and Josh Brian, who they wanted that really big family room the gathering space on the main level had to be a certain width yeah they felt like their current one was too skinny and so um the only way to actually figure that out was brian said let's go look at a house that has the width that you might yeah. like and then they walk in they're like this looks great so then they built their house that way mm -hmm. um so i think yeah that that stuff's tough i mean it's like you're spending it's kind of like i said i don't i don't think there's necessarily going to be a world where people are buying and selling property completely online i mean they're, that's where they live. I don't see why they wouldn't take the time to go and see it. See it. And if they're building a house, I kind of feel the same way. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say the same thing, Brian? Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. really people people have a hard time visualizing things in general. They mm -hmm. really have to stand in a space and feel what it feels like and get to know it for sure. Mm -hmm. well, well, fantastic, Brian. Any other signing off things? Did you catch any fish this weekend? <laughs> You know what? We went uh, down in southeastern Minnesota, did a little turkey hunting, and we did oh, get nice. a few trout. So nice, that was real fun. 
Fantastic. That's what they, we have a new we have a new construction house. We, we live on a park, and across the park, they tore their house down. They're building a new one. And I was out walking with their neighbor today, and he said, "I was trying to figure out why why no one was working last Friday. Like I didn't hear <laughs> commotion." And his wife turned to him and just goes, "It's fishing opener this weekend. What do you mean? Like they're all out. They're done. They're not working on Friday." <laughs> so, it's so funny you say that. Well, back when I was in college in Wisconsin, I had a scheduling class for construction scheduling. Mm -hmm. and the teacher stood up there and said, this week right here, the block of over Thanksgiving, you just don't schedule anything in the state of Wisconsin. That's deer opener and people take off the whole week. And it, <laughs> literally, if you scheduled something in that week, he, he made you change it. That's so funny. It's the teacher telling you like, just don't awesome. do it. I promise it's not going to work. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Well, that's great. Appreciate it again, Brian. And what's the, what's the best way for people to find like a website or something yeah. if they want to look you up? Yeah, parentbuildersinc.com. We can post that in the comments. Yeah. So, um, okay. Thanks again, Brian. I, I I always say whenever I whenever people ask me about you know builders and who they want to work with, Brian's amazing custom homes, really great prices, super high value. Um, he's knocked out of the park for everyone that you has built tell, You can tell how awesome they are by his backdrop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> he, just, he just finished up his own house. So amazing. Check that out. So awesome, Thank Brian. You, Brian. Thanks, Appreciate Brian. Your time. Um, and we will sign off until next time. Sounds good. Yeah, have a good day. Peace.